What's up? My name's Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So today's video is sponsored by HUDSite. Not only was I given a free key to use this on Steam, but I was also paid to create this video. No, I haven't been told to say anything. All that I'm saying is completely my own words and I had full reign over the control of this video. So in the past, I've made a couple of videos explaining how to get custom crosshair overlays on your games. Now, of course, these two or three videos required the game to be run in windowed or windowed borderless mode to work properly as they just opened up another program that had a click through ability and of course stayed on top of all of your other windows. While that was useful and pretty much undetectable, it's not exactly the best if you'd like good FPS in the game that you're playing, as playing in windowed mode or windowed borderless can and does often cause massive input lag and lowers the number of frames that you can get by a hell of a lot. Let's say you were able to run the game in full screen or full screen exclusive mode, get all of the great benefits and have a custom crosshair overlay. How would you do that? Well, in today's video, we'll be running through HUDSite, both the free and the paid version, which basically creates an overlay with a custom crosshair on it that not only you can create and modify yourself, but you can reposition and do basically anything you want with. It's an amazing piece of software created by the same people who created the recording software Playclaw. If you haven't heard of one, you've probably heard of the other. Now, of course, while there is a free demo version and the full paid version, it's not too expensive and you'll be able to get to both of them very easily. The paid version is only available on their website. If you're going to be buying it, I'd recommend getting it through Steam as it's probably the best place to get updates from. HUDSite Custom Crosshair Overlay. If you'd like more information on the software, the Steam page is a great resource to get more info, though of course we'll be touching on most of everything that's written here and a lot more in this complete crash course guide. Of course, mine's displayed in South African brands, but if you're curious about other prices in other countries, here's the Steam DB webpage. If you're going to be buying it in US dollars, you can expect to pay $6.99 for this application. So it's definitely not something that'll break the bank, but for what it does, it's definitely worth the price. Of course, you don't have to flat out buy it. That's what the demo version is for. Now, assuming you buy it on Steam, you'll automatically have the full version installed and ready to use. Before we get to showing you the full version of the software, I'll simply show you how to download and install the demo or trial version so that you can go ahead and test it yourself before you decide whether you'd like to buy it or not. In order to get yourself a copy of the demo, head across to the link in the description down below, hudsite.com. Then simply click download installer right at the very top and you'll download the Windows 7, 8, 10, 32 and 64 bit compatible installer. Simply click on it to open it up when it's done downloading, then read through the license agreement, accept, next, choose an install location, next, start menu folder, next, choose whether you'd like a desktop icon, next, and then finally install. This version doesn't require you to have Steam installed as it's the standalone version. As soon as the program starts up, it'll ask you for an activation code. I don't have one, so I'll simply hit the X and then I'll click try it. And there we go. Now the demo software is open and it's running in trial mode. You can simply click activate software and paste in a license code if you'd like to purchase it. To purchase it, you'll find it at the very bottom of this page over here. License price, $7. Simply punch in your email and click buy a license. Payments are processed by Zola currently, which is the same provider that Twitch uses. But of course, I'd recommend using the Steam version. So let's go ahead and do that. Assuming you've purchased it on Steam, it should simply show up in your library under the software category. Or of course, you can simply search for it at the very top. Then simply select it and click launch to open it up. Now that the software is running, you can see it's currently activating. And after that, software is now activated at the very bottom of our screen. From here, all we have to do is pick a crosshair that we like from the list over here. You can simply select any of these available ones and you'll get a preview of it right below. Otherwise, you can click custom image at the very bottom to use your own custom image. But we'll be touching on this in a later part of this video. For now, I'll leave it as a tiny thick circle. On the right hand side, we can change the color mask to change the color of the image. Hovering over this picture over here gives you the color selector, which I'd recommend using over the RGBA input over here. A stands for alpha and it stands for opacity. The lower that this number is, the more transparent the crosshair will be. 255 being fully opaque and zero being fully transparent. I'll leave it as say red. It's a nice easy color to see on our screen or actually orange. 
There we go. Then we have image scale percents where we can scale up and scale down the crosshair on our screen. Then we have render toggle hotkey, which is simply an on or off button that we can press to toggle whether we want to see the crosshair on our screen. I'll set this to say numpad zero. And we also have the offset tool to change where it's positioned from the center of our screen if it's not showing properly. I'll leave this as is for now. Then finally, we have auto start with windows, start minimized and minimized to system tray. Before we play around with any of these tools, I'll go ahead and give you a demo of what it looks like inside of a game. Now, of course, before we get to playing any hardcore games, I'll start with something like Minecraft. Then while we're playing, I'll touch on the anti-cheat compatibility for the software. And there we go. As you can see, it's already detected our window and we can see the little orange circle in the center of our screen. I'll simply create a new world and hop into it. So how exactly does HUDSight know what a game is? Well, it simply supports software that's DirectX 9, 10, 11, or 12, OpenGL, or Vulkan graphics. Both 32 and 64-bit games are compatible. If your game consists of one of those, you'll have the crosser automatically showing in the center of your screen whenever you tab in or out of the program. If I were to tab out of the program right now, you'd see that the crosshair vanishes until I tab back in. Super simple. Let's go ahead and play with some of the options over here. I'll open up the chat so I can move my cursor out and I can play with the settings. Let's go ahead and change the image scale. I'll make it to say 200% just so you can see the effect it has. Then the XY offset simply moves it across to the left or across to the right, up or down. Super simple and it's very easy to use. Simply control click to type in a value. You can of course type in your own custom value here if you'd like. There is of course also a reset button if you don't like the position it is and you'd like to bring it back to zero. Of course, hitting numpad zero will simply toggle it on and off on your screen. Super simple. Now, of course, if the cross is a bit too tiny for you and you scale it up, it'll begin to look blurry as it's just a simple image. This is why we'll be creating our own custom crosshair later on. It's super simple, don't worry about it. If I make the game full screen, you'll see that the cursor stays about the same size, about the same size as my mouse. Minimizing it back down, it's still the same size as my mouse. So this is relative to your screen size rather than the game size itself. So you'll have a pretty consistent crosshair size between any game that you play. So of course I picked a very simple program like this first. Why? Well, simply because it doesn't have an anti-cheat. Now, before we get into too much discussion about whether it's safe or not to play inside of games, you'll have to understand that this works the exact same way that the Discord or Steam overlay works. It's an overlay. It does link itself to the game the same way that other overlay software does, but it doesn't interact with any of the game files. And it's not drawing itself through the game's engine, it's in fact just overlaying on top of it, hence it disappears and reappears whenever we tab in and out of the program. It's the exact same as the Discord or Steam overlay, meaning it doesn't actually play with the game's memory in a way that should trigger an anti-cheat. However, as you know in the previous videos that I did on programs that run completely separate of any game that you're playing, they can still be detected at some point, and of course the software is no different. While overlay software can be detected, it's very often not punished at all. Escape from Tarkov, for example, detects custom logo overlay, or whatever that software is called, and the other overlay software that I mentioned. Because those both run as separate applications that don't touch the game at all, the only way that they can be detected is through the program's name in your task manager. Now, of course, because this program is running and overlaying, it's not safe from that. However, Using the escape from Tarkov metaphor that I mentioned earlier, if you're caught using an overlay, all it does, or at least did at the time of recording that video, was prevent you from connecting to online servers until that program was closed. Super simple, and no real punishment was dished out. Of course, the only real way to get an overlay that isn't detected by anything is by using your screen's built-in overlay effect. Now, of course, not many screens have this, and they usually have to be gaming branded and orientated. You can find them within the on-screen overlay using the physical buttons on your monitor. But up until that point, you either need to run the game in windowed mode and use a free piece of software, or you could run it in full screen, exclusive full screen, borderless, or windowed mode using HUD side. Now, of course, I haven't exactly touched on that. Let's quickly hit F11. And as you can see, we're now in full screen mode and our crosshair is appearing exactly as we expected, the same way it did before. Nice and simple. Now, I couldn't show you exactly what happened as it took a good second for OBS to adjust. Basically, the game went full screen, the crosshair disappeared, and then it reappeared a second or two later when the overlay had reinitialized itself. Let's say you'd like to use the custom crosshair in a game such as Counter Strike, Destiny, or Forza Horizon. Well, if we have a look at HUDSight's Steam page, you'll find some interesting information. Games compatibility. Some games don't allow third party overlays, for example, Destiny 2 and Forza Horizon 4. Some games allow overlays, but with limitations. As an example, CSGO, which must be started with allow third-party software in the command line. 
Of course, by doing this, you're able to capture the game using software like OBS, have Discord overlay, and of course, HUD side overlay, but you won't be able to play on competitive servers. As for Destiny 2 and Forza Horizon 4, you won't be able to use third-party overlays. That's just what it is. While we're here at the very bottom, you'll see anti-cheat compatibility. This is what you're probably also interested in. HUD site works in the same manner as most recording or streaming tools. This tool is not a cheat. It does not change game files or gameplay. It just draws an overlay like the Steam service. You only need to be sure that the terms of service of a game you play does not deny such enhancement. So this program probably won't be detected by most anti-cheats, and if it does, it'll probably be detected by the name of the program, as with other overlay software in other games, such as Escape from Tarkov, which we mentioned earlier. In that case, usually they won't dish out bans or punishments. The only thing that'll happen is it'll stop you from playing competitive or online matches while that software is open, nice and innocent. However, one thing to be cautious of is whether the game itself has an anti-cheat or software installed that allows screenshots to be taken and sent to their servers. Of course, while you can cheat in basically any game, if the anti-cheat doesn't detect it, it still doesn't mean that it's safe from physical screenshots or screen recordings grabbed by anti-cheat software and sent to developers or moderator teams. If someone looks at a screenshot of your gameplay and they see boxes around players, they'll of course ban you for using ESP. If they have a look at your screenshot and see a strange crosshair, they may choose to do something about it. This of course will happen with any custom crosshair software. Keep that in mind. But besides that, it simply just works out of the box. Before we get done with this video, how exactly do you create yourself a custom crosshair? Well, it's in fact relatively simple. All you have to do is click the drop down under select site image, and then at the very bottom, choose custom image. This will let us click here and choose an image path. What format do our images need to be? Well, simply .png. Why PNG? Because it allows for transparent backgrounds, which is exactly what we need. Let's go ahead and throw together a very basic one. Of course, you can use software anywhere from Photoshop to GIMP to even Affinity Photo, which is what I like to use. As long as the software allows you to create an image with a transparent background, you can use it to create yourself a custom crosshair. So I'll create one here for myself. That'll be, say, 480 by 480 pixels. Let's go ahead and do something super basic. I'll add myself a circle to the very center, get rid of the fill, and set a nice big orange outline that I'll make nice and thick. Then I'll go ahead and add, say, something interesting like a couple of triangles just to demonstrate exactly what this looks like. I'll get rid of the border and set the fill color to the same thing. There we go, that looks rather nice. Let's go ahead and save it. I'll hit Ctrl Alt Shift and S to bring up the export window. Of course, this will be different depending on what software you're using. Simply make sure that you have the PNG file format selected, set the correct size, and if you have an option, make sure that the transparent background is checked just so that it saves without a background. I'll click export and I'll save it into my downloads folder, for example. I'll call it cross. I'll go ahead and close out of my image editing software and head back to HUD site. I'll then click image file path and then select my cross.png image. After clicking open, you'll see the window expands quite dramatically as such. I'll of course need to lower the image scale back down to 100% so you can see what 480 pixels would look like. I'll lower it even more to say about 20. That seems pretty good. In fact, that's still a little bit too large. Let's go ahead and drop that to say 10. Much better. Of course, if you'd like, you can control click in here to type in your own value. Let's go full screen once again, and you can see our crosshair is performing as expected. Of course, it's a bit low. I would use the X and Y offset to raise it just by a pixel or two to get it to the perfect center. But of course, this game has a crosshair built into it, so it's not necessarily something you need here. Hitting F1, you'd see what it would look like without the in-game crosshair, and only my custom crosshair. Let's go ahead and try a different game. I'll simply close that of Minecraft and launch up something else. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what you have to do to get this to work with, say, Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Of course, because it doesn't allow third-party overlays, we have to go ahead and change the game's launch options in Steam. I can do this by right-clicking Counter-Strike, Properties, and then on this main page over here under Launch Options, all I have to do is add the option that says Allow Third-Party Software as such. Closing out of the screen and launching up Counter-Strike, you'll see that it shall immediately work in the game as we expect. There we have it. You can see it right in the center of our display. And if I head into the Options window, followed by a video, you can see at the very top, I have full screen selected over here, not full screen windowed or windowed mode. As you can see, I haven't done any video magic. The Apply button doesn't work as it's already been set and nothing's been changed. From here, you can go ahead and play the game as usual as you'd expect. Ooh, I can get my service medal. Bonk. There we have it. I've hopped into a surf server. And as you can see, the crosshair is working exactly as expected. No movie magic has been done here. 
If I'd like to, I can go ahead and change the position inside of the software to get it to better fit the center of my screen, as you can currently see it's a bit off. I need to shift it somewhere like one pixel to the right, so I'll go ahead and do that here. And there we go, it's almost perfectly in the center. Now something odd to remember about this kind of thing is that in order to have something in the center of your screen, it needs to be an odd number of pixels wide, otherwise it won't be placed perfectly in the center of your screen, or at least what looks like the center of your screen. As the very center of your screen isn't in fact a pixel, it's in fact a space between pixels, as your screen has an even number, not an odd number. The center is two pixels wide by two pixels. But besides that, the program works exactly as you'd hope and expect. That's about it for this video. I'd highly recommend you check out the software as it works with full screen games, which a lot of overlay software doesn't. Of course, while it is paid software, there is a demo or trial version available that you can grab through their website. If you'd like to see how to get it again, check the description down below for timestamps to get back to that part of the tutorial. Of course, if you'd like to get back to the developer, the best place to do this is to head across to the Steam store page and then in the very top right, click the community hub button. This will take you across to here where you can head across to discussions and create your own issue or discussion by clicking start new discussion, write in a title and a description to talk to the developer. From there, you can get your questions and answers solved or fixed. That's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot. Thank you once again to HUDSite for sponsoring this video and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.